many of the tools on the advanced is used for release of software and other things. Um, this one, I'm going to use a way to create EMU captions, and I'm going to also um, go in and actually use some of these functions to set new object properties and things like that. For this one, I'm going to use a new uh, application in here, or an application that was developed a long time ago for some performance uh, testing with using the client monitor. And uh, that one will be an example. There's no captions, uh, and there's a few bugs in there. So uh, let's go first, create a database, and import those objects in. So I'll take this one. I'll go ahead and open up the database. And that's a new database I just copied there. I'm going to import the objects. 26 objects, it seems like they all have uh, this version list. So I'm going to export those ones as text because I will need those. So So exporting those one as text, and let's just see if uh, everything works in here. Seems there's some problem with some menus, so let's go fix those ones. So global variable seems like we left over from something that don't exist, and there's something about reports here using the old two six styles reporting. So I'm just deleting that code now that. Files. This one has the same issue. So I now have uh, an option or, or a version of this one where everything now compiles in uh, 2013. So let's go export this one, and this one is just a word. Uh, work in progress. I'm going to export that one as this one. So let's go in first and uh, open up the merge tool and import uh, my work in progress version. So I'm So import the original, so I have something to compare against um, from that one. And it's not really based on anything, so I can leave all that blank in here. Let's just import my other version in here also. And I want to go ahead and compare that one against the other one. And it got rid of 18 equal objects in here. And um, I can then go export the login. So I now have this new version. There's actually eight objects in here that are changed. It's a little interesting in here. Uh, after I compiled them, I actually had some changes added in here because this code was developed before 5.0 with the class.key in here also. So these changes uh, were done in here uh, in the objects. And of course, I have my two menus down here, but all these tables had the class that we set in here. So if I want to release a version of these objects, uh, I could go ahead down here and say under advanced, I have this function to set new object properties. And the same thing that was used during the merge is also possible to actually do for new objects in here. So I'll go in 
currently I can look at my object and the version is out here is uh, performance and then the highest number is 23 up here. So I can actually go use my advanced function in here to say uh, for this version and I want to compare it against the 23 up here. I will adjust against the previous version of the same solution. Put today's date in, uh, noon, and my new version list in here should be uh, 24 in here. And then I will go and hit OK. So now the new object properties has been modified. So if I go and look at my objects and go to the object card in here, I can see my new version list, my new date and time has been set. So my normal export that I also do from Emerge will actually replace all my functions in here. So when I say export my objects, I'll go export this one to a dash two in here. I want to substitute date and time since I'm releasing. Also going to remove the modify line in here. So that's uh, another thing that I can do. And then I'll go down and uh, say OK down here. And I don't need any of the conversion between uh, code for different versions of it. Anymore. So I exported that one. Uh, and uh, if I go take a look, I can go and import the same one again. And just compare it against what I actually did in here. So if I do this one and compare it against D1, I'll just be able to see uh, the differences that I actually added in here. And I can see my new version is date and time of that one I'm actually inserting. But let's go import uh, the database or the objects, and I'll open up my database again in here. Import my version of the objects from six to dash two down here. And I can see now the uncompiled one, they all have the same one. I'll go ahead and compile those. And I have now modified the version list. And this one was, of course, only for objects that were new compared to NAV, but it works exactly the same, finding a portion of a version list. So let's export this one here as performance 24 and also want to export that in text format also. So the performance tool has now uh, been corrected to work with 2009 R2 and there were some technical changes. There was also some changes uh, required based on the code not being completely right to begin with. So let's go back and look at another problem in here because if I look at uh, one of these tech uh, objects in here, like locking priority, for example. I have no caption on this one. I have no caption on anything in here, actually. So that's the next thing to solve in here. Um, so let's go back to the merge tool. Import my 24 version. to compare that against it. Uh, I can also get rid of these uh, versions that are just temporary. Yeah, I don't really need to keep those. So in this version, I have all these problems about captions. I also probably have text constant in here. So under advanced, there is this tool to create ENU caption. And the first step would be to create all the information in here. So I go in, I'll say that uh, this one is my version. Here's my text file. It's only used for export. I want to create uh, the ENU language. You could also create another one like Danish, for example. If the application was originally written in Danish, you'll be able to create all the captions by using field names and other things, uh, taking the Danish uh, text name. For finding all these texts, uh, I need to filter on only certain objects being mine and then in uh, other objects that are not within the first range, I'll filter uh, for only the fields in a certain range. That means I don't want to correct Microsoft issues in here. 
when I need to create text constant, that is the second step of this process, what should be the text constant number now? For the, so for right now, I just need to calculate all these ones. And if I now go into code text in here, I'll see um, there's a whole long list of uh, text that is actually found in here. And if I look at it, I can always drill down since the code is inside the merge tool. I can drill down and find that was a function name equal commit uh, and things like that one. Um, all these things has been found uh, inside um, um, the code in here. So uh, I can go in then and say if some of these ones, I don't want them to actually be used as a text constant, I can go in and add the information in here. Say I don't want to use this one. That's a function that I can use to it by the way down here. F9 it means I can select many of them at one time. But basically, uh, these ones down here, I probably don't want this to look like uh, hard coded data. Um, and uh, this one is all the text I actually want to create uh, for this one. I don't look at any of the fields or the objects, captions. Those ones just needs to be created uh, all the time um, at this case. So I made a decision about the text. There is a flow field down in here, by the way, and it's when you're doing a second version of this one, it will actually show you that in future, in the other versions in the merge tool, there is a uh, a text like this one that has been set to not create uh, in the export in here. So uh, I'll go back to my function in here. Um, to export the language. Uncheck this one and now I need to put in another one. So I'll just have a dash two out here because it's going to create a text right now. And now that number down here makes uh, importance because if I have a new text created inside base objects, objects outside my first range here, it will actually start with text 50,001 down here. But uh, I'll just hit OK down here. And it now exported that one. So let's go import that one and actually compare and see what the differences are. Because I don't necessarily want to import everything from text. Um, instead of like uh, leaving the objects alone actually, so I don't have to compile it. And I'll go in and say I want to compare that against 24. And in this case, there was nothing that was actually changed. I have the same 26 objects in here that actually uh, all need to change because there was nothing that was done in here uh, to begin with actually. So I can go look at my contrast. And if I look at my table here, I'll see um, I used to have all my fields uh, down here. I have a caption added with locking priority. I had um, caption added in the fields, uh, and it just goes on like that one uh, the whole way uh, down in the code. In here. If I also go look at some of the code units down here, I should be able to find some of my code that where say here it used to say if confirmed. Now uh, after that one, it say text one, text two, and so on. Because this object was inside my own range, I, it will add text starting with uh, one. But in the other objects, it would have started with the other one, and it added all the text constants in here for me also. So. This text file is what I need to import in my R database. Since all objects were changed, uh, I can do that original file. I also would have actually um, worked on the other one. Now added uh, captions in here, and if I uh, filter on this one, I'll make another temporary version down here. 
because I need to go back to the merge tool and then uh, change the version list on all these objects. And I want to compare it against my previous version. I should still have all 26 uh, object chains that have zero equal in here. So uh, I don't need a lock. In this one, I want to do that same function I did before about changing uh, the version list. And go in and say this one would be performance uh, 25 in here. I also have to set the rest of it correct. This one was compared against the 24. Let's see. And I will just remove the modify uh, lines if I actually have one. So this one will be a dash two. And I'll go in and uh, that was the export. So now let's go back, import the text file and import the new version of the solution with captions now. Okay, so our all now has today day Today stayed on it. it. Worked fine. And I'll go in here. When writing these now names or file names for different versions, it's always good to copy as much as possible. Um, because if you write them every time, you end up having. Uh, it look a little different every time, but if you just copy the name, it works much better. But I now added captions, both for text constants, but also for everything else in my version in here. So if I now go to my table and I look at my field, I now have created an ENU caption in here. There is also a translation tool, and that's actually the next step uh, to use the translation to create this one for another language uh, inside uh, my uh, own application. Anyway.